second half, but I'm taking you with a ride with me. Hopefully, you will be the uh, first adopter of this, and you tell other people about the Jarnal Jarnal is an endogenous nutrient in our body, which means your body makes it. Almost the moment I say that, you want to ask the question, why does our body make GG and what is it for? If you walk out of this room and you know that, you are blessed and you can tell other people about it. And it's not yet even in biochemistry textbook, never mind nutrition textbook, a medical a, a, a textbook, nowhere there. So biochemistry, stay with me and I think you're going to love it. So this molecule is found in plant as it is in mammal. Beautiful, is it now? On a plant, the green color. Look, GG, the top. If the two OH groups stick together, that is carotenoid. So the next time you eat your vegetable and fruit, you see the color, think GG. Two molecules of GG make carotene. All the carotene you prescribe, you take. Lutein, beta carotene, da 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 da, go on and on. We have 600 of them. They all came from GG. Can you imagine that? So the next one, tocotrienol. See, the reason I discovered the GG there is because the, G, the plant used GG to make tocotrienol. You see, the whole GG is on the tocotrienol molecule. The other one is probably most interesting. What plant are not green color? Chlorophyll. The entire tail of chlorophyll is GG. There. So without GG, plant cannot live. <laughs> we are grateful they are GG because you depend on the plant to have the life that we have, right? Now, on the mammalian side, look at that. MK4, the entire tail of MK4 is GG. I'm gonna come back to this one. Look at CoQ10, two and a half, CoQ10 is like an albatross. You know, it's just so, it's just huge, you know. It's hard to absorb, so everybody talk about bioavailability, because they can't get that in. But if you take GG, Two and a half molecule of GG is the entire tail of CoQ10. I bet you heard this for the first time. When have you heard how you can how you can make CoQ10? You can take CoQ10. GG makes CoQ10, and GG takes makes MK4, not MK7. I know heard, many of you hear about MK7, but I'll come to that. All right. This one here, a little bit more. This one here, I'm, I'm wanting to say the bioavailability side. <clears throat> Look at the bottom diagram, see that? The pharmaceutical company came up with the phrase small molecule. Anything molecular weight less than 1,000 and anything more than 1,000 is not. So the, the smallest of the large molecule is insulin. It's about 6,000 molecular weight. And even that, we have to inject. Otherwise, it, the body can absorb. So this, then look at the small molecule. The largest of the small molecule is CoQ10. It's already reaching 1,000. It's very difficult to get CoQ10 to get in our body because it's so huge. Meanwhile, look at GG, three times smaller than the size of CoQ10. So it's easy to absorb like that. So people say that CoQ10 is ubiquitous. May I say that MK4 and CoQ10 is ubiquitous because GG is ubiquitous. It's more that. And GG is endogenous in your body. So I'm going to move on to this. <clears throat> Think this is a pathway. I'm not showing you to see how smart I am as a biochemist. This pathway, mavalonic acid pathway, is Interstate 95. We have many interstates in the country, but no interstate is traveled as much as from Maine to Florida, 95. This is it because we need cholesterol to live. We demonize cholesterol because of hypercholesterolemia. Otherwise, nine Nobel Prizes are given for cholesterol. So cholesterol must be doing something right in our body, like that, and this is the highway. So if you look, and the body makes five carbon at a time, mavalonic acid, five, and 15, phanosol, you go left, making squalene and then cholesterol, like that. Now. Go down, is, people usually don't think about that. That is your GG. Sitting right there on the Interstate 95 is your GG. Nobody talks about And then, but everybody talks about CoQ10. Probably nobody talks about MK4 until now. And then GG is also required for the synthesis of skeletal muscle protein. 
I will crystallize this in the next slide because of drug prescription and drug taking. Satin drug hits at C5. See that? It must be very powerful because at C15 and 30 steps later, cholesterol dropped like mad, 40-50%. We know this. It is the most successful drug out there. You can demonize that in the way you want, but it is the most successful cholesterol-lowering drug this anybody know about, but statin drug. It inhibits a C5 and cholesterol drop. 50 million people take statin. 10 times less is FTI, bisphosphonate, postmenopausal women to bring strong calcium to the bone. That's it. Hit at C15. Now, once you hit, let me stay on this for a few moments. <clears throat> you hit on the statin drugs, right? Everybody know when you take statin drug, cholesterol drop, a good thing. You take statin drug, CoQ10 drop. Everybody in this room knows that. What people don't know in this room is CoQ10 drop because GG drop. Look at that. CoQ10 cannot drop before GG because GG is required for the synthesis of CoQ10. See that? So it's inhibiting GG. Now, how do you map this together? You and I would care if you take statin drug to take CoQ10. The traditional cardiologist does not care. He or she will only care. Do you have any back pain, muscle pain? See, they always ask. They're fishing for myopathy. That's there. Skeletal muscle protein synthesis. GG is required for the synthesis of skeletal muscle. There it is. So GG is a piece that connects the dot, the skeletal muscle protein synthesis, and CoQ10, but they're not in the same pathway. So if you take GG, we, because of this, we are all in. We have a study in Texas now, Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas, on people who are <clears throat> taking statin drugs under a cardiologist's care, who have confirmed myopathy, and walking on a medical treadmill. Those on a, 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 a GG and those not on GG. The study is ongoing. We probably won't know until the end of this year to, to figure out if we would mitigate the myopathy. So that's it. So this is as clear as I bring it out to be. So now I can only show you on animal study and some biochemistry. This is a protein synthesis part. I don't want to bore you on this. And it probably, and also work on sarcopenia. So that means not necessarily in statin. Sarcopenia, that's a big problem, you know? As we age, we lose muscle mass, and we try to resist the muscle mass loss by having exercise. So that piece, sarcopenia is lack of making muscle, and therefore it's also a GG piece. Everybody in the room knows we need amino acid and creatine and some of these branch amino acids like that. Those are the fuel for making the protein. But most people don't know if I go back, see this slide here? Look at the protein thing. You need the GG. A protein has molecular weight typically like 100,000. It is much, much bigger than an albatross because CoQ10 is 1,000 like that. So when the protein is half made, something has to hold on to the protein. Does everybody ever explain to you? If you take copious amount of protein, it doesn't just go to where you think you want to go to. The protein is chopped liver. It becomes like amino acid. And then they have to restitch it back. And how does it restitch it back? In the nucleus. The DNA do it. We have 20 essential amino acids. The permutation will be impossible to fathom, except if you're controlled by the DNA. So the DNA makes one amino acid at a time to stitch it on. And then when it's half stitched on, then the, the protein is already 50,000. It's huge. So there's something holding on to the protein, partially made protein, until it's fully made. That unassuming compound is GG. So if you, if you don't have the GG, the body is unable to make it. It's not even an amino acid. It's just a diterpenoid, you know? But it needs that to, to live. So <clears throat> I said that I would come back to visit the MK4 because people know about MK7, anti-arterial sclerosis and then help to make strong bone, the MK7. I don't disagree that those studies are valid. <clears throat> and people said that, oh, vitamin K1 eat a lot of dark green vegetable, phyloquinone, 
Vitamin K2 would be MK7 because of fermentation you make in the gut. The Japanese natto, you have fermentation, kimchi, blah, 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 uh, uh, like that. Correct. But isn't it curious? If you take organ meat and meat, there are no MK7. They're MK4. So it's like, aha. So if it is meat and in the human body, they're MK4. I want to know about that. And I can tell you further, the only manoquinone made in the human body is MK4. So don't you want to know why the body wants to make MK4 and not MK7? MK7 is made here in the colon. So if you make in the colon, well, that's not absorbed. It's already past the, the intestine for absorption. So it's probably good for IBS and those things, or some kind of a, a gut brain axis, gut liver axis. I don't, I'm not trying to poo poo that there's a place for that. But that's a further reach than if you take if the body makes MK4 directly, it makes MK4 extra hepatically in 25 different organs. So there must be a reason why the body makes MK4 to the exclusion of all the other MK. Here it is. In the simple biochemistry uh, on the right hand side, the top curve, uh, the top picture there is phyloquinone saturated. And then only a fixed amount go in for clotting factor. And then the tail, uh, the tail is cut off, the phytal tail. And then the quinone goes in. And then they look for a GG in 25 different organs, stitch it onto the ring. That's MK4. I, I'm, I'm putting as plainly as I could for you. This biochemistry is not going to change. This is a biochemistry. Therefore, the question is, are uh, MK4 is make less? Only if when we get older, we don't make enough GG. Because the tail is GG. And also, if you take statin drug, it only make it worse because it inhibits GG. And if you take bisphosphonate, it inhibits GG. That's it. So it's biochemistry, not even nutrition. And it's not going to change, you know. And by the way, if you go back here, this is only, uh, it is only proven in 2010, GG converts to MK4. So it's not a long time ago. This study was done about three, five years ago. I did not know at the time that GG converts to MK4. So we use GG and it increased strong bone. Had I known, I would have asked the scientist, can you measure how much MK4 it is there? So now, however, GG increased the bone health. So GG converts to, by the way, for the record, we sell a lot of MK, mostly people buy MK7, MK4 here. In Japan, ironically, the other one have natto that makes MK7. Natto, you read this. They, they inseminate this in your head, you know. But in Japan, the only drug for anti-osteoporosis is MK4. Isn't that curious? 45 milligrams. You Google MK4 anti-osteoporosis drug is in Japan. But here is a nutritional supplement. MK4, not 7. <laughs> So here, inflammation, I can do another time for you. This one, I, I like, oh, my, my bottom thing slipped. It, it, it just got moved around. On the left curve there would be control, CoQ10, uh, cholesterol blank, shaded CoQ10. And then the next one to it, if you add statin, cholesterol drop expected, CoQ10 drop. See that? You go to the next one, that would be GG. If you put GG, it, did not, it does not lower cholesterol, not, not supposed to, but it increased the synthesis of CoQ10. See that? The, the third column. And then on the fourth column, it's GG plus statin. Sorry, the bottom thing mess around, move it. So it statin and GG, the cholesterol drop, and the GG prevents the statin to lower the CoQ10. That's it. That's all this study, Italian study. <clears throat> I already talked about myopathy. I'm going to skip this. And this is, a, they did it on zebrafish. On the muscle thing, you can see the destruction of the muscle tone uh, on the satin and GG in the bottom. And even in the cell, the cell simply just died. The satin treated, the, the cell kind of clumped together. It is not viable like that. Australian study. The GG increased calf muscle force. 
It would, you see that? With the statin reduces force production and GG completely abrogated. And when they don't give statin, it increases muscle force. So it works on people with soulless muscle atrophy. And the dosage you can see in the bottom. And this is another study in Japan. They atrophy the muscle, no GG added. And so this is a translation for people who study muscular atrophy like in sarcopenia. And why are the Japanese scientists interested in this? Because the elderly population is high, so they care about it and they identify GG as a source for that. <clears throat> this is a study done in China. In the last 10 years, we begin to notice people who take statin to lower cholesterol, they begin to have statin-induced diabetes. Yeah, like that. You see that? You can read it in the news. And it came out from the Jupiter study. They found out that this is so because statin incapacitate the muscle to take up the sugar. So they lose energy, low energy, and the uptake of the glucose is not there. When they add GG, you can see the glucose increase, the insulin increase, the glucose uptake increase, both uh, in the blood and the second one also in the muscle, and they check out on four of those different muscles. So they, yet here they identify that GG is also, decimation of GG by statin is also responsible for statin-associated diabetes causing. And this is a study on the GG impact on glucose without statin. So I didn't want to say that only in statin case GG is relevant, but even not, you can see at the dose doses, the GG works on, improve, on improving the glucose challenge and the insulin challenge. These next two, three slides, and then I'm finishing here, <clears throat> has to do with Bronx. How many of us know Bronx? Bronx is bisphosphonate-related osteonecrosis of the jaw postmenopausal women, estrogen drop, and then they cannot retain the bone, in, in, uh, calcium in the bone, so they take bisphosphonate, it helps to ensure uh, the mineralization of the bone. Good. In a weird situation, when you take bisphosphonate, and it's discovered by dentists, in 2002, they'll see the patient, the woman patient, and they thought, whoa, this woman patient, patient have worse than just problem in the teeth. Her, she had necrosis of the jaw. That's a bad thing. This is not normally a thing. Of course, when you have necrosis of the jaw, then you have opportunistic infection, blah, 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 and a whole string of other things. But mostly, the most severe thing is when people have bone metastasis. I'm, I'm, I'm sad way already. People have cancer, their bone metastasis. When the cancer moves to the bone, the options are not good because you can't cut the bone. You know what I mean? So then they have to take 10 to 20 times higher bisphosphonate. This is not for the reason for strengthening the bone. This is for the reason that when you take bisphosphonate, the bisphosphonate will go to the bone and kill the cancer. You with me? So then, then these patients have much higher incidence of BRONJ because of the reason I gave to you. Five million American women take bisphosphonate. Of course, 50 million take statin. So to, to perspective. So this is an animal study. Clearly, GG improved bone tooth. You can see on the bottom right, on the three dots there, did that in the animal study. And this is yet another study, very recent. You, you can wish the best for me. We are trying to work with uh, Thomas Jefferson University I'm going all out to do this, to show. We're, doing, we're working with Thomas Jefferson University Dental School, dental surgery, and they're treating women on this, and in, this is an exception. So they have tooth uh, uh, necrosis, so they're gonna put drop and implant calcium fortified GG onto their mouth to see if we would help to reduce this. This would be a, a two-year study. Ask me in another year or two. If that worked, this would be good. We're not going to make this as a drug. 
if the FDA allowed this as a, as a droplet on the mouth, this would be good. However, for simplistic application, you can have an oil pool of mouthwash. We can put GG here to reduce inflammation of the gum. That we have. Ask me who does it, I'll tell you later. I'm not supposed to tell on stage. <laughs> so, and so this is reducing inflammation is the bottom left, uh, bottom right. You can see uh, how, how this is uh, uh, done like that. And it also increased the angiogenesis so that the gum would grow back. The reason bisphosphonate uh, uh, inhibit this kind of, uh, cause this kind of necrosis, it, it inhibit the gum cell for making GG, and therefore the gum simply just die, and hence the word necrosis. That's it. It's a very specific side effects of GG when in the, in, in the bone is a good thing. It inhibits the osteoclast and promote the osteoblast, and therefore it's good for the bone. However, it does the opposite in the gum. So it's that one we're paying some attention on the side effects. <clears throat> this is my crystal ball. About 40 million satin users in the US, it may reach 80 million, maybe not 2030, 2040 perhaps. Satin is a 21st century aspirin, whether we like it or not. And statin will replace the 52 million acetaminophen Tylenol uh, user currently. So that means it's huge for prescription drug. So it's one in four patients have SAMs, and that's the name you can, oh by the way, Google SAMs. And then you read yourself, sand in the bottom there, satin associated muscle symptom. You can read all about this yourself like that. It was first noted in 1988 with the first introduction of statin. And then another one in four patients may develop type 2 diabetes. And the American Diabetes Association said that all diabetic must take statin drug because diabetic have one three times higher chance of having cardiovascular event. So it's just a paleotrophic benefit for diabetic. And then ironically, uh, this statin drug causes diabetes. So they're, they're struggling with it, how to change that uh, thing. So now possibly 20 million statin users may benefit uh, from GG. <clears throat> so final, this is one of the, my final one or two slides left. We, I think that it would be a great thing to have a ubiquinol and GG. And I call this a disruptive CoQ10. The ubiquinol is bioavailable because it got two OH groups rather than ketone groups. They absorb better, naturally bioavailable. And ubiquinol is an activated form of CoQ10. Now, I want to say this and I want to be true and honest. If you take ubiquinone, if your body is healthy, your body converts it to ubiquinol. Keep that in mind, like that. And however, if you have deficiency, then you can take the activated form. The second one, and then third one, ubiquinol is an antioxidant. It is well known. It resides on the LDL particle and prevent the LDL particle from oxidation. Another piece. The fourth one, I call it the biohacker form of CoQ10 because of the biochemistry of the combination of ubiquinol and GG, in particular for people who have sarcopenia, who take statin, who take bisphosphonate. So that's the reason why the number four. And then number five, the GGPs is not going to have a problem with absorption. The ubiquinol piece, like I mentioned, is an albatross. So we form, to formulate this with MCT, and then Criala, it's all natural. MCT, you need to have fat to emulsify the CoQ10, and Criala is a bark, pine, pine bark extract that we use from chili, like that. So if you have, by the way, if you ever take a bioavailable form of CoQ10, please read carefully how do they make the CoQ10 bioavailable. You can put detergent you make the CoQ10 bioavailable. But if they put nasty stuff on it, don't get that kind of CoQ10. Get the kind of CoQ10 that you natural thing. So I found this, Criala. You can Google, it's a South American work, it's from the bark of a Chilean tree. <clears throat> this is a summary. If you were to uh, take a, a GG, 150 milligram, uh, 300 uh, with a meal, and this is an endogenous and supplemented thing. I am very confident that the GG, with my work with GG, I think it, I, 
this would be such a beautiful thing for me to retire on the G. I really thought that after the Toko trial, you know, my life is done, you know. I, I, I got to do something with my wife and do other things, you know, like that. Then I stumbled on this. I said, Elizabeth, this is, this is good stuff, you know. I got to spend a little bit more time on this GG. So I, I, I think I have to stick around for another five years or so. When I finish this, then other people can take on what they should do with this GG. Mm -hmm.